We are now live. Hey everyone, my name is Josh and I'm the guy behind the free animal communication practice site, Speak Good Human. And one of the features on our site is Ask the Pros, where you can go to that page anytime you want and see the questions that others have asked and see what the pros have answered. And if you have your own questions, feel free to submit them there. This particular live broadcast is our Ask the Pros live feature where we get to hear directly from one of the professionals and have them answer questions live for us. So that's what we're gonna do this hour. We are here live with Lisa Larson and uh, she's an animal communicator and teacher in California. And uh, she studied with some of the best ones in the field. She's studied with Carol Gurney and Teresa Wagner and Marta Williams. And she now works with clients all around the world. She teaches classes all throughout the year. And she has a new book called Pause Talking. And um, she might mention that in a second or two. But um, I want, want, wanted to also just say that um, she is a Reiki master. And she also has had a lot of the same issues that us we have had as learners and she understands the path that we take and we are taking and so i think she's a great one to start answering some of the questions that you guys have submitted so let's see lisa welcome thank you happy to be here great do you want to just i know your book just came out do you want to yeah. just Say a, a little something about that before we get my on. Book. To Yay! It's, it's me. beautiful. Yeah, that's my baby. That's Makana. And I lost him about two, just under two years ago. And he helped me write the book. So um, he's just the love of my life. And uh, yeah, he was a big, big inspiration. And I thought she did a great job putting him on the cover. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's a it's called Pause Talking, a course in communicating with animals. And basically when I started to write it after after he passed, I you know, I would lay in bed and I'd think, you know, it was always his in my time, you know, because you know, my husband would go to sleep and it was always his in my quiet time and I would I was so lonesome and everything and I thought, well, you know, I could sit here on Facebook and social media and messing around, or I could do something productive. So I went and I got myself one of those keyboards for my iPad, mm -hmm. and I wrote the whole book lying in bed at night <laughs> on my iPad. And I just, you know, I sat there and I thought, well, you know, what do I have to say? You know, for a long time, I thought, well, you know, other people have written books, how-to books for animal communication, but... You know, so it, it stopped me for a long time. And then I thought, yeah, but they they haven't, you know, they don't have my experiences. And, you know, I've got this class that I teach. And, and basically, I just, I put everything that I teach in class in the book in a step-by-step -step format. And I go all the way from what it is, the introduction to professionalism. So if you really, really want to be a professional, you know, what that entails in dealing with people and dealing with the how to how to give information to people and dealing with your website and your business and you know not everybody will be interested in those chapters but um but up until then uh it's 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 a lot about i've got stories in there i i did it mostly for people who wanted to learn how to communicate with animals but the feedback i've gotten is that even if you don't want to learn how to telepathically communicate it's it's good to help you understand animals because uh, I I've been told well one word that somebody used was that I was unapologetic <laughs> that was how, how I feel about animals and how to treat them and how to look through their eyes my big thing is helping people look through their eyes so yeah I'm very proud of it it's it took a long it was it was a long journey but I'm I'm very proud of it and very proud that Makana was part of it. Great. Well, good luck with it. And hopefully you. somebody out there will read it and do some good stuff. Yeah, it's available on Amazon. So. Okay. All right. Well, let's get to this first question. This one is coming from Elizabeth in Canada. And um, I'm going to read the long version so you can understand what she was coming from. She okay. says, 
I've often heard communicators speak of feeling the energy of an animal to know when they're connected. And she says, I never feel anything. When I'm ready to communicate, I go through a routine of stating my intention and then start introducing myself. I'm never really sure that I'm connected until the answers start coming in. Is there a way to tune into that energy or do you have any other suggestions to know when you're connected before beginning the communication? Yeah, I like that she used that phrase, tune in, because for me, when I hear what she's doing, it feels like she's, she's skipping a step. Um, yes, meditate. Yes, set your intention. But there's there's techniques that you do, and and one of one of the techniques, in fact, I one of the techniques I explain in depth in my book, is when you raise your vibration, because everybody's going to meditate and and have a technique. Hopefully, they have a technique to raise their vibration, and this can be done through visualization or, you know, visualizing walking up stairways or going up in a balloon. There's a lot of pe different people have different ways. Um, raising your vibration, what I do is once I raise my vibration, I imagine, and this is just one way, um, I imagine a radio dial. You know, the old radio dials where you're, you're going through static and then you're, you, you go back and then you go a little bit further and then you finely tune down to, I got it. And what I do with that is, when I raise my vibration, I'm very aware of what my vibration is. When I start that radio dial, I set the intention of the animal coming in from my peripheral vision. And I set that radio dial and set the intention that the animal is going to connect with that tuning, tuning in. And I actually even see the animal when I feel it lock in. There's there's a there's a point when I'm when I'm you know I'm not doing it with my hand, but um, there's a point when it kind of it goes smaller and smaller and it locks in. It, there's a point that I actually feel the vi the two vibrations, you know, because vibrations will go like this, you know, like here's here's his vibration, here's my vibration, you know, and they, they'll be doing the waves and doing this and then all of a sudden it's it it's it's like it it feels like a hum when i connect and start being it, it's it's a matter of start being starting to be very attuned to what that vibration if you're if you're attuned to what your vibration feels like then you can understand what the animal's vibration feels like and you can feel that link when it locks in. And then when I feel that link lock in, I, I actually even see the animal step out of that radio dial and, and in my peripheral vision and walk towards me. And how that animal walks towards me will tell me a lot about the animality, felinality, caninality. Um, equinality of the animal itself. So if they come running up, they say, hi, 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 you know, they're real friendly. If they're, if they're back here and they're kind of timid, then that's going to tell me. And that gives me my first link to who this animal is and, you know, what their basic makeup is. But it's really about, it's, it's about those words, tuning in. It, it's don't skip that step. Don't just set the intention and start talking. Make sure that you create something that you are tuning in and feeling that vibration lock in. Mm, interesting. So the, what, if they do that, they should be able to feel something. That, and that's what yeah. you're talking about. Okay. And it can be, it doesn't have to be a radio dial. I mean, they're, like, for instance, I used to be a musician. And I, I was a guitar player. So sometimes I, there's, a, there's a, a technique from tuning your guitar that's the same way. You, 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 you pluck two strings at the same time, and you tune until both those, those strings are playing the same note. In other words, vibrating at the same rate, because that's what playing a note is. Uh -huh. And so, in fact, that's, you know, that's a good, um, that's a good, like, example 
that, you know, if you know somebody that plays guitar or something, have them show you what that, that feels like, what it sounds mm-hmm. like, because you can actually feel it. And, and if it, it, it could be anything. If you have a particular interest in something that has some kind of vibrational wave, you can, you can create anything. I just, you know, usually the, the radio thing is something that a lot of people can relate to and stuff. But yeah, you definitely, there, I never will talk to an animal you know, I mean, unless we're just doing something real quick or something, but, uh, you know, that's my process. I, I make sure to tune in to the animal and feel the animal's connection, feel the animal's energy before I ever introduce myself, before I ever get to questions, before I ever do anything else. Because that's the point that, that, that helps me really understand who the animal is. Okay. And would you use that same technique? in the moment if you were let's say on on a radio program or just meeting an animal right away in per you know like on the street would you have to- I- yeah, it's a little harder. You you can. I mean, usually this is through a meditation. When right. when you're just doing something like a, I do these things at a, a place called Dexter's Deli. We used to do some some. Um, it's a a pet food store in San Diego. It's a great natural food place in San Diego, uh, and they would have a panel of communicators. And then afterwards, we would talk. We would do um, little communications, short communications. Right for charity and stuff. And in that case, you know, I think learning how to do that other stuff, learning how to do it by visualizing helps when you're do when you have to step into doing it quickly because then you can kind of in your mind you you don't have to take all the time to do it but you can it's it's a much more direct process once you've had a lot of experience doing it with that other way i wouldn't start the other way though okay yeah and that's probably where she is and you're right she should just need to go back and start working on that next the other step the middle step the middle step and it, and it's not like i don't use the middle step all the time for my private communications the yeah. only time the only time i don't is if i'm put on the spot and i have to just quickly go okay let's let's feel what this is you know and then you're just kind of What's your energy? What's his energy? Great. Okay. Next question is from Ruchi in India. And she says, I just started learning animal communication a few months ago, but I picked it up very quickly and I'm found that I'm very accurate. But if someone asks me to communicate for money, fear sets in and I begin to question my accuracy. How do I overcome my anxiety? (laughs) <laughs> well, that's that's kind of an easy one, and it, don't do it for money yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I um I am I am fully on the page of you know you wouldn't go to a doctor that had just started to learn medicine a few months ago. Right. You know, I mean, when I when I started doing this, I create I had created a forum, uh, like like you so older mm-hmm. <laughs> older yeah, I remember, I remember. Uh, yeah and um that was my way of doing it because i was i was living in a conservative a rather conservative little community and i was like after i'd taken all these classes i'm like, how am i going to practice and i worked on that forum i talked to probably four to six animals a day probably five to six days a week wow. and i did that for three to four years wow three to four years you shouldn't be going professional until you have had so much experience with so many different types of things and, and, and situations that people are going, you really, 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 really have to do this professionally. You mm-hmm. should not be doing that until people are over and over and over again telling you. And, and that's what, that's what happened to me. I mean, I was actually a college professor, and then I, you know, I had for for a couple of years, people had been telling me I should, and I was like, I don't know, I don't think so. Uh, and then I, in the crash, I lost my my job, and then I just never started looking again because people just started calling me. Mm-hmm. Um, when it when you're ready to go professional, it will. It will happen, and you know, I mean, and that's one of the things, like I said, and uh, that I, I pointed out in my book is that, 
you know, I don't pull any punches about what it's like to be a professional. People, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, great, I'm going to make some extra money and I'm going to do this as a, you know, I'm going to do this for a living. This is not an easy life, <laughs> you know. You, first of all, you're not going to make a, a whole lot of money and you are going to have to do everything unless you were to get you know, huge, 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 which really there's nobody as far as, there's mediums that are like that, but not animal communicators. No. Um, but you have to do your, you have to do your own websites. You have to do your own scheduling. You have to, if I, if I got paid for all the work that I did and all the time that I'm on the phone just scheduling and talking, talking to people and explaining, I'd be a very rich woman. It's, 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 a, it's a minute amount of time that I'm actually talking to animals. Mm -hmm. a very short amount of time but the thing is after you have had all of this experience then you can start you know then you can start feeling more comfortable and even and then you know I would say start with um, start with you know not charging very much first of all I would say when you, if you really want to go professional, then you you put the word out there and you say, okay, I'm I'm going to do free readings for this, you know, until I get until I feel really, 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 really comfortable doing free readings, mm -hmm. you know, and doing it as you would a professional. I mean, I've got I've got two students currently in my certificate program, and their thing is, you know, my certificate program is you have to do 50 case studies at least. Mm -hmm with different different types of things you know you have to have so many missing animal cases so many mm -hmm. animal and spirit cases so many behavioral so many illness you know because unless you're able you know unless you're able to do that um, you're going to have a problem and um, you, you're always going to doubt yourself mm -hmm. you know what I mean um, so I think it's really, really important that um, people understand that it's not something that just uh, that you just jump into. And the more you do it free, you know, you do it free for a while, and then you ch charge just a very little bit for a while, and then you can raise. Now, you know, when you do that, if you charge a little bit and raise your prices, you know, incrementally, that's one way to do it. Um, because then it, it is harder to raise, it's, it is hard to raise prices. Um, you know, you can jump in and, and, and you know, go f for the average of what people are doing, but you really, really need to have done all of that stuff prior to that. You have to have had all of the experience prior to that. Okay. That all makes sense. So keep your day job, practice a lot, and then yes. see, see here, feel how it goes, and you'll know when the right time is to start charging. Absolutely. Okay. If you just tuned in now, we're here with Lisa Larson, an animal communicator, and uh, we are asking questions, and she's given us some great answers. And this next question is from Joe in UK. And... Um, this one is, what do you do when either you don't know what to ask the animal or when you get nothing from them? So um, I actually have a student that this is one of her problems. And um, one of the things that you can do is have questions at the ready. You know, when I teach a class, I give a give a list of practice questions that they can have at the ready so that you have an idea of what you're going to talk about. Um, but the other thing is that it's really important, in, and I don't know how other communicators do this or how other communicators teach, but it's really, really important to um, think of it as a conversation. You know, I don't, I don't ever really go in and just pepper an, a, an animal with questions. I think of it as a conversation. You know, I mean, you wouldn't just meet somebody at a party and say, so I, I hear you've been having some urinary tract issues. <laughs> you, know, I mean, <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't just jump into something like that. So um, 
So I just, I look at this as a conversation. I want to make sure that, that the animal is trusting me before I get into things. And that's, you know, I mean, like that one woman said, you know, introducing herself and such. Um, now, if you get into it and you think that you've done your, 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 um, link and your radio dial and all of that and you're still not getting anything then i would take i would take a step back and i would relink mm -hmm. i would take a step back and i would do that an, another quick meditation or no, another quick radio dial or or connection whatever your process is for the connection i would do another quick one like that because if you're not getting any information it's probably that you've lost the link okay that sounds good. I'm sure there's lots of other reasons why they may not be getting it. it could, they just could have a block for it or. Well, yeah, there, there could be like, for instance, if you're doing something for, let's say you're doing something live like I do. Yeah. Um, like I do, some animal communicators will just get the information and then they'll talk to the animal and then they'll call you back and tell you what they got or they'll email you. Right. I personally have you on the phone because I feel like this is, you know, you're part of the process. Now, if there is somebody that on the other end of the phone that's blocking me, you know, they're a skeptic, they're cynical, they're, no, 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 no. You know, then that, yeah, definitely that's going to block the energy. Okay. Um, usually at this stage, it's not usually like that. Are there times when animals can be shy and not want to talk? Um, sure, but then there are ways around that. If you get an animal, like, you know, that you feel is 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 a little shy, you know, first of all, you're always, uh, especially at that point, you're going to ask their permission. But you can always ask them, explain to them, look, I'm just learning how to talk to animals and it's really important to me because it's it helps the animals and it helps animals have a better relationship with their people. Talk to the animal about it. Say, can you help me? Put the animal in a position of them being able to say yes or no, but even if they say no, you hear, you're going to hear it. It's not just radio silence. Okay. You know, so you can have some you can have some some uh, techniques to do that, but generally it's not going to be any. Generally, it's not going to be something. It's generally not going to be on their end. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it's, if if it's a, if it, if there's a block, usually to be coming from the person. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there are animals who, you know, who are just more quiet. Mm -hmm. than other people and they take a little bit more finessing you know i mean you've everybody has met people at a at a party or wherever where you just really you're i'm working really hard here <laughs> you know yeah. working really hard to start a conversation here um but then you find that one thing that you say that kind of opens them up mm-hmm well, animals are just like people in that way. Some are just like, woohoo, how you doing? Yeah, you know, before you inter even introduce yourself. And others just need a little bit more finessing mm -hmm. to do it. But again, you have to feel like you have that link. And the, I'm going to say one other thing is that when, when that happens, I, I too wonder if people are just doubting themselves. Uh -huh. If they are hearing something and they are dismissing it because they're doubting themselves. Yeah. So you always want to check yourself to make sure that you're not dismissing something that you're getting. Yeah. And, and, and then you're, you think you're not getting anything. Yeah. And then if you want to get over it, I guess what you would do is just say, let's just assume that I am getting that. Even though I doubt it. Let's yeah. just assume for now that I am getting it and let's move, move forward. Yeah, because you're going to get the validations anyway. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, there there is a fear. You know, I think some people may have a fear of, well, if I get something, if I get anything at all, then it might be wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, maybe they have that little fear. But you know what? Especially at that level when you're learning, this isn't brain surgery. Okay. You know, nobody's going to die if you get something that you don't get a validation for. I don't even like to say that you got something wrong because you don't know that something was wrong. You just know that you didn't get a validation for it. Right. 
you know, uh, maybe you misinterpreted the information or whatever. But if you do, nobody's going to die. Yeah, we're talking about, familiar. you know, at, at that point, you know, we're talking about how, you know, how they like their home, how they like their toys, what do they like to do, what do they like to eat, you know. Right. I mean, as it gets later on, you know, you get you end up getting into some very serious things when you're helping animals cross, when you're asking them if they're ready to go, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. But then that goes back to that first question or that other question about don't start doing it professionally too quickly. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Let's move along to James in Chicago, who says, animal communication often feels like an invisible process, and the quality and amount of information that comes through feels out of my control, like I am stuck with whatever comes through, and there's no way to upgrade the experience like I would be able to when working on other skills, like learning a sport, for example. How do I increase accuracy and control? Um. I found this question interesting and in that he mentioned that it's not like sports and I'm going to say it is. Oh. It's practice 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 practice. Okay. You know, the more you practice, the more you uh the more you don't feel like you have to force it. I mean, anybody that, that is, is, you know, if you try to control something, if you try to say, well, what did he say he, that he, he got, he gets information that it's an invisible process and the quality right. of the information that comes through feels out of the control. I, I was a little confused when I read that mm -hmm. because I'm not, I'm not the one to judge the quality of the information. Mm. For me, when I get information, it's just information. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying it's good information, bad information. All information is just information. Mm -hmm. Now, what I do with it, what I, um, how I respond to it, how I interpret it, and moreover, how I present it to the pet parent is something completely different. Okay. But information is information. You, you, you have to trust the information, trust whatever information you get, don't doubt that information, and the more you do that, and the more you get validation, and I'm gonna add that in, in, in the practice, 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 mm -hmm. validation, 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 because if you don't get validation, if you don't consistently get validation, yeah then you're not going to be able to trust yourself and you're not going to be able to trust the information. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, when, I, when I teach classes, I have people, you know, keep write their um, readings in, in a little notebook and I, oh, I hand out little paw stickers, you know, but you could mm -hmm. get like a highlighter, the little stars that you had in grammar school, you know, and put, every, put them down, you know, put a little highlighter, sticker, every time you get a yes, every time you get a yes, because then when you start doubting yourself, you can go back and look at that book and say, I got this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. The problem is so many times we get, we'll get 10 yeses and one no, and the only thing that we consider is the no. That is true. <laughs> You know, we're just focused on that. No, right. you know, there is not going to be, there's never going to be a communicator that is a hundred percent accurate a hundred percent of the time. And anybody that tells you otherwise, a psychic medium communicator, anybody, anybody that tells you they're a hundred percent accurate, do not just run away, mm -hmm. run far, far away because there's no way it's not, a, it's not a science. It's not a science, but you know, it's interesting uh, that he used that sports metaphor because I, I wrote a blog post once about, you know, how people expect communicators to be 100% accurate 100% of the time. Right. So if we get one thing wrong, it means we're a fraud. Right. But if you look at Michael Jordan on, on an average day, he's making, he was making four out of 10 shots right. and he was the best ever on a good day, seven out of 10. Mm -hmm. And that's the best ever. So my goal in being a communicator is to be better 
on on my worst day than most people are on their best day. Okay, that's a good good goal. Yeah, you know, because you're never going to be a hundred percent. You're going to get no's, and you need to you need to first of all, you need to know not to know to sit with a no. You need to know how to talk to the person and make sure they're not just going no, 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 or they're not saying no too quickly, or they're not misunderstanding what you're saying, because sometimes semantics plays a role. Right. And uh, so there's, there's, a, there's a way that you can do things, and I actually run a, a live practice session once, in a, once a month, and we, we had this conversation on Monday. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's about, and it was about, you know, when, when you get that, when you get that no, you don't just, you know, don't just stop. If you're getting the, if you're getting the information really strongly, because there's a difference between information that comes in strongly and information that comes in, you know, I mean, I, and I'll say this in, in readings all the time. I tell people, you know, some information comes in and it's just kind of, eh, whatever. And I just kind of let it go. So it just doesn't seem that, you know, if I get a no on that, that's fine. You know, if it's important, it'll come back. Then there's the other information that, man, it just, it comes in like a gangbuster and, and it's just like a snapshot in front of my face. I'm not going to let that go. And most time they don't let me let it go. The animal well, doesn't let me let it go. Well, let me ask you though, since you gave that as an example, let me just guess at what James might've been thinking about the quality of information. Let's say there's five people in the class and they are all communicating with the same animal and they all get varying degrees of information. Some is more detailed, which is maybe what he was talking about, the quality of and the accuracy. And some people get maybe something much more simple or less detailed. How does, is that just all about practice then? So my answer to that, and I get that question a lot, mm -hmm. um, is if you go into a party and you and there's one person that's you know that let's say the host and five different people go up and have separate conversations with the host are they always going to be talking about the same thing nope. no no might be Some, a variation probably a very it could be a variation some things could be repeated some things you might go off in a completely different direction based on your frame of reference you know some people might be really good at getting all of the specifics the the little you know uh, my bowl was blue you know uh, or, or something other people might be really really good at getting who the animal is what the what the feeling of the animal is and and my experience um, because I'm I'm much more that way, and not that I don't get a lot of evidence, but you know, it's it's my experiences when I ex when I tell the person who the animal is, what that felinality is. That's when they go, oh yeah, that's exactly who he is. Mm -hmm. That's what because that's who they know. Yes. Okay. You know, and we can get these these great bits of evidence, and that's that's nice. But people tend to dismiss feeling things, you know, clair clairsentient type things as not being clear evidence. Uh -huh. But it is. As long as the person you're reading for understands it, you don't have to. And that's why I was talking about, you know, I don't really listen to the quality because there's things that come in and I like, really? You <laughs> want you want me to say say that to this person? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I there was one time, a lot of times when I'm speaking with an animal in spirit, I um I I will get like little things right at the end where it's if you see this, this is me saying hello type of thing. And right at the end of this reading, we had a great reading, and I told this woman I I got this big flash of purple. And I said, uh, you know, I asked her about it, and she says, well, purple's not my favorite color, you know, I, 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 there's nothing in the house. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll add, let me ask one more question, and then we'll just leave it. And I asked, can you give me anything else about that? And, she's, and the dog said, or the cat said, penguin. What? what? Mm. I'm, <laughs> purple penguin? You want me to tell this purple person purple penguin? <laughs> but if you get it, you have to give it. 
So I right. gave it to her. We couldn't figure it out. Ha, ha, ha. You know, I told her, you know, if, if you know, a logo, a card comes in a purple penguin or purple in the background, whatever. If you got a logo with a purple penguin, it's his way of saying, you know, I'm here. Two days later, she says, okay. She emails me and she says, I, I, I thought that I was going to start writing in a journal like, like you told me to, and I was going to leave it in this, keep it in this real pretty box that I have under the bed. I p pulled out the box, and the box was purple. Uh -huh. thought, hmm, okay, that's interesting. I don't want to put too much into it, but I knew I had to, oh, I knew I had to, uh, cleaned it out. I opened it up, and there were a bunch of Jaff National Geographics, and there on the top was a penguin. Oh, wow. How interesting. So you don't know. You can't judge the quality of the information. It may mean nothing to you. But yeah. the minute you say it to them, they understand it. Yeah. So do, the, because the minute you get into judging the information is the minute you get into your head. Yeah. That's and that blocks, that blocks the rest of the information coming in. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Great. Let's see here. Um, Lauren from Texas says, I find there are so many interpretations to questions I ask the animals that I'm not sure if the animals, the answers are correct. For example, when I'm asking a dog if she likes water, you could show her a hose and she'd say no because she associates it with a bath. If you showed her a pond, she'd say yes. How do you ask a question to elicit a specific answer? That's really easy. Number one, don't ask them yes, no questions uh -huh. and ask them instead of ask in, instead of giving them an image, don't ask, you know, I, I forget how she said it, but I would say, how do you like water? Not mm -hmm. do you like water? How do you like water? Uh -huh. You might get a yes or a no, I don't like it, or they may show you, all of a sudden, they'll show you swimming in a pond, or they'll show you nipping at a hose. Mm -hmm. But don't give them the image, let them give you the image. What if you they, specifically, you wanted to be more specific, like what, why, do, why aren't you, why don't you like drinking your water? Or is that already a specific? Uh, well, no, that's that's a little different than okay. than what she says. But yes, I mean, then you're then you're asking a specific question. Okay. You're 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 asking us. You're put. You're giving them a specific situation because it's a behavior. Because there's a difference between a behavior and just what they like. Okay. You know what I mean? So if you're asking, why don't you like drinking water? Now, that's a, that's a real touchy one because, like, for instance, I had somebody uh, co um, contact me once and she says, uh, you know, will you please tell my cat to drink more water? Uh, well, I can tell your cat to drink more water, but cats just don't drink water if you're feeding them, you know, if they're getting their water elsewhere. And if, and if there's a problem, then you need to figure out how to give, give, give them more moisture, like tuna juice or chicken juice or something like that. You can't ask, I mean, you can ask, but you can't expect an animal to do something against their very nature. Now, if you go into something like that, why are they drinking so much water? That would be more of a question that would be a more common question. Why are they drinking so much water? Of course, the first thing is take them to the vet. Right. But, um, you know, then you're, you're saying you're looking at a health issue. Then it, in, and it pops over into looking at a health issue. But if you're, if you're, you know, really just, you know, how do you like this or how do you like that? There's a big difference between behavior and just what they are inclined to do. So it's it's just about knowing how to ask. Like I say, don't don't. It's 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 like doing an interview. You don't put words in their mouth. You know you yeah. you don't ask yes or no questions that stops the conversation. You ask open ended questions. How do you feel about this? Um, yes, you can ask why aren't you drinking your water, and then just accept whatever the answer is, you know, but you're not necessarily, you know, I mean, I guess some people would, would put in that as an image. I would just ask it, mm -hmm. you know, why aren't you drinking your water? Why is there something you, is there something you don't like about your water? Okay. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can phrase questions 
to elicit different types of answers. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes, that makes sense. Yes. We have about 20 minutes left. Um, if you're just tuning in, we're talking with Lisa Larson about animal communication and learning this awesome language. And um, in a few more minutes, we'll, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask her live, then please feel free to write it into the, the um, chat area and we'll get to those. We may not get to all the questions today. And if not, we will answer them probably on the Ask the Pros page on Speak Good Human, and uh, you'll be able to read it there. Um, so I'm gonna move along here and see how many we can get through here. Uh, this next question, I'm gonna skip a few because this one is kind of interesting, is how do you deal with information from an animal that their person may not want to hear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a whole chapter on this in my book. Uh. <laughs> this is how important this is to me. I dedicated a whole chapter to it. Um, working with people. It, you know, you really have to know how to talk to people. The information that you get from an animal is useless if you cannot present it to the, to the person in a way that they can accept. And sometimes it's a real tightrope. And I don't know that there's any one answer because everything is going to be situational. Um, but let's say that you, that you clearly see that the person's energy is, is affecting the behavior of the animal. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people that I've done where my whole back, my, my hands hurt when I just get on the phone with them oh, because wow. their energy is so, you know, and maybe this is a peeing problem or something like that. And the more that they get ramped up about the animal peeing, the more the animal pees the, because the animal gets, you know, animals are so connected to their to their person's energy and you know when I do a reading I always consider that it, I always tell my people I, I look at this as either you know a, a negotiation a family negotiation family therapy because it's never just about telling the animal to do or not to do something it's about looking at the whole looking at the household looking at what is going on with the person so sometimes you have to be very, very careful and, and be able, you have to have good people skills. Yeah. You have to be able to judge where, where their line is and how open they are to certain things. And what I, one of the techniques that I will do is if I see that they're, you know, being resistant, because some people it's, it's, it's okay. Some people you, you just say, can I be blunt? And they're going, yeah, sure. You know, and they're just open to it. Other people are really resistant to it. Um, and when I, when I feel that resistant resistance, what I will do is I will find something in my own life that I have done similarly to that person so that they can understand I'm not making a judgment on them. So in other words, this actually happened last week. Um, I was talking to somebody, the cat was peeing a lot, and I was saying, you know, it's the fact that you're c kind of focused in on it, you're so focused in on it. I don't remember if this was peeing or, or fighting, but you're focused in on it, and every time this happens, you're going to, you're, energy level is going like this and she said well but what if I yeah it was a, it was a it was a fighting it was two cats fighting uh, and she's well what if I you know we had this conversation and I have to go out I have to go out in in a few hours you know that's fine and 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 I don't judge her for feeling that way at all you know because you know you you care about your cats you want to know what the best thing to do but she was just she was getting really like that and so my what I do is I find something in my memory banks and I told her, you know, my cat used to, every once in a while he'd get real aggressive and he would jump up and, and, and grab me. And for a while, <clears throat> excuse me, for a while I was getting a little 
like this around him. And then one day my husband came in. I, I, he did it to me in the hallway. The cat did it to me in the hallway. And my husband was standing behind the cat. And he stopped and he says, look at yourself. I'm the animal communicator. <laughs> you know. But he says, look at yourself. Look at how tense you are. Mm -hmm. And I had to sit down and go, yeah, I am. And then the minute I took some breaths, the cat calmed down. Okay. You know, so as what I, my technique for doing that, if you run up against that, is make sure that you're not judging them because it is totally understandable that, you know, if they're fighting, peeing, all of these things, that people are going to get really, really upset and not know how to deal with it and get frustrated. It's normal. It's human. So I want to make sure that I'm validating them, that I understand how they feel, that they, they have every right to feel that way. And then I give them an example from my own life when I did the same thing. Yeah. Because pretty much usually all of us have gotten to that level of frustration. Yes. You know, and then you can give them some techniques to, to calm down or breathing techniques, whatever you want to do, but validate and, and commiserate. Okay. And let them know that, that they aren't alone, that even the animal communicator has those problems. That sounds great. That's good advice. Probably what any therapist would do all as well. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to, let's see, let's do one more and then I'll check to see if there are any live questions. Um, okay. This one, because this one is pretty common, it's probably one of the most common that I hear. And it's, um, how do you know, pretty much, how do you know you're not making it all up? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's practice and validation. Uh, same, that's same practice and validation because, it, well, first of all, you, you need to, it, it's not just the practice in the talking, it's the practice in learning how to truly empty your mind. You know, this is the one job that I had. You know, I, like I say, I used to teach college for 15 years, and when I would have a problem, have an argument, have, you know, a loss, whatever, whatever kind of personal problems. I, I could get to, to work and I could stand up at the podium and open my notebook and I could fill my head up with all of this other stuff so that I wouldn't have to think about my stuff. Well, mm -hmm. animal communication is not that way. You know, you have to, with animal communication, any kind of psychic work, you have to dump your stuff. I mean, really dump it and being able to do that takes a lot of discipline, a lot of focus, and a lot of practice, and a lot of meditation. Uh -huh. So it's about really practicing in your meditations, practicing emptying your mind, and practicing focusing on, you know, that specific thing, you know, focusing on that animal. And as long as you have that link and you're really focused on that animal, you should be fine. But what the problem is, then you've got your self-doubt because then your, your, your mind starts working. Well, should I, that, that couldn't be right. That couldn't be right. Mm -hmm. If it comes in, you, you, you write it. If you're not doing it live, you either say it if you're live, but if you're, you know, most of your people are probably doing it not live. But um, the minute it comes in, you write it down, you let it go. Write it down, let it go. Write it down, let it go. Write it down, let it go. Get Worry about the validations later. Don't even consider it. Don't, don't think about the... This kind of goes back to that, um, comes that in, other question. You Oops. It, if you Did... I, I was hearing a feedback there. Yeah, I, I'm trying to see if... Uh, on Facebook, sorry about that. I was trying to see if there was any other questions queuing up go oh, ahead. okay Sorry. um so yeah so you know you 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 let the information come in and you let it go do not do not hold on to that information because all the time you hold on to that information you're you're preventing other information from coming in the next step then is getting the validation the more you get that validation Use that notebook, use those little stars, use the, the highlighters, because the more you get that validation, the more you learn to trust yourself. The only way to learn to not doubt yourself and to learn to trust yourself is to get validation and, and 
over and over and over and over again so that you know that what you got so that you know what you felt like so like when you got that information it's 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 that feeling of when somebody says Yes, exactly. I have, you know, he explained, uh, you know, a green toy or something, whatever. You know, yes, it's the only green toy I have in my house. You know, I hate green. It's the only thing. And my brother gave it to us and, you know, he went away. You know, whatever. There's this, like, long story to it. You know, it's really meaningful to them. But you may not know it, and the minute you get that validation and you go, oh, wow, great, that's a validation, then you want to think back, what did it feel like to get that, that message? Because there's a specific feeling when you get a hit, there's a specific feeling that you have with it. So when you give something to someone and they validate it, you want to think back, just quickly in your mind, think back, what did it feel like? Imagine that, imagine getting that information, think back what that felt like. Because the more you do that as you go on, that's what makes the information stronger. When I was talking about some of the information is just kind of eh, and others is like really right there, like a snapshot. The more you do that, the, more, the closer you get to that snapshot phase. Because then you really, really know what it feels like and you really, really know how to trust it. So practice, you know, empty your mind, practice validation. Mm -hmm. get, let, let the information come in, let it go, then get it, don't worry about the validation until you're, you're at the point of validation. Okay. That sounds great. Um, I couldn't figure out, let's see. Well, Oh, here, here is a question. Here's a live question for you. This is okay. from Jamie. Do you approach speaking with a, spirit, a pet and spirit differently than one who is still alive? Hmm, good question. That's Jane? Jane. Jane. Hi, Jane. Um, so, no, not necessarily. I mean, energy is energy is energy is energy is energy. So we're still connecting with energy. The difference between connecting with an animal and spirit is just the things that you talk about. You're still making the connection the same way. You're still meditating, you know, doing your connection, your radio dial, um, however you, however you do it. You're still doing the introductions and everything like that. And you're still connecting to the energy. But it's, it's having an understanding that the, the spirit energy is going to be a higher vibration. Uh, so you really, really need to be able to raise your vibration because, you know, spirit is lowering theirs as you're raising yours and we meet someplace in the middle. I always kind of joke that they come a lot farther for me than I go for them. Uh, but a, a lot of the spirit stuff is just the things that you're asking them, you know. So um, spirit, spirit, you, you know, you're going to ask things like, well, I do. This is what I teach. I don't know how other people do it. But I ask things like, so what, what was the reason you were in your person's life? Uh, what, why did you have to leave so soon? What are your soul contracts? Why, you know, things like reasons that, that they came together. Well, they're still in body. They may not know that. There's just a handful of animals that I've, I've, you know, spoken with that know that. But in spirit, especially after they've been in spirit a little while longer, because if you talk with animals in spirit a day later, it, they're going to have different information than they are a month later or a year later. Because they're going to have more of a, uh, more, uh, I don't I can't think of the word. They, they, they process their life yeah. more. You know, it's like moving to another, uh, another country. You know, the day after you leave, if somebody says, are you going to come back? They're not even thinking about coming back yet. And that's one of the questions a lot of people ask is, are they going to come back to me? Yeah. So, you know, the day after, they may not know that. They may not know all of these things because they're still so connected to their physical life. Right. doesn't mean that you can't talk to them. I mean, animals and spirit is my specialty. It doesn't mean that I, I've talked to them like within seconds of them leaving and 30 years later. So it doesn't matter the time. But as far as the connection goes, I, 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 again, I can't speak for other communicators. I connect exactly the same way. I, I do my meditation. I 
do the tuning in and and connect with the energy okay. and hopefully that answers your question yeah we are uh taking live questions now and i'm not sure i don't see any others but i was having some issues with seeing the feed so if you're out there and you're watching and you have a live question for lisa type it in right now otherwise we'll move along to a couple other questions that i have that we can ask her um one of them lisa was about uh finding lost pets and mm. somebody was enjoys doing that or it's one of the things she's learning and but she's finding that she's only found a few of them so far which i still think even a few is pretty good that's really but, good but um do you have any tips for how to find lost or missing animals yeah well um i will say that i no longer do them anymore a lot of communicators don't for a couple of different reasons um uh, some people don't do it just because they're hard, you know, by the time you look for somebody and tell them where they are, they've moved on. Yeah. I don't do it just because I can't shut, I don't have that shut off my emotions gene, <laughs> you know, um, and I get too involved emotionally with the people who are, um, have lost their pet because uh, I've been there. Uh, that said, I've had a lot of success with it when, when I first started. Uh, I will do it still for my clients who I know who I've been working with them a long time. But my thing about missing animals is that just what you said, that's pretty good. You have to understand that not all animals are going to be found. Even people who specialize in this, like that's their specialty, like animals and spirit is my specialty, not all animals are going to be found. Not all animals even want to be found. Not all animals can be found. Yeah. So the best that you can do is do the best that you can do. Give them the information. I mean, clearly you're, you're doing well, you know, if you've already found some. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing well, and uh, it sounds like this person already knows the techniques. I mean, there's there's certainly the first techniques that I use to, the first thing that you want to do, and this is more, I'm sure, more for other people than for this person, because I'm sure this person knows this, the person that asked that question knows this already, but the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you feel that the animal, w whether the animal is in body or animal is in spirit. Right. And so you're going to want to have, there's different techniques. I always use three, at least three. Uh, one is I will look at a, a road. One is going to go off to my right and up, and one is going to go straight to the left, and I ask the animal which way they went. And if they go up, they may not be in body anymore. If they go straight, they're in body. Is that and that's your own technique? That like you you labeled those like those roads that way. I uh, yeah you can label the roads however you want. Oh okay. Yeah you can label the roads however you want, but that's yeah that's I don't remember if I got that from a, another teacher or not. I've okay. been using it so long. Um, but yeah, so you know some people will use is is I don't personally do, do, does the energy feel heavy or does the energy feel very light? Yeah. You know if they're light they're in spirit. I don't usually use that one. The, the other two that I use is imagine image of, of a candle flickering and a breeze and the candle going like this. Does the candle stay lit or does the candle go out? Oh. And the third one I really like is I imagine a flower bud and then I imagine it opening. And if it just opens to a pretty flower, the animal is still alive. It, it keeps on opening and it, it, to the point that it falls over, it, the animal is in spirit. And who's, who's sort of making those images happen for you? Is it the animal? Uh, n I would, my guides. Okay. I'm connecting with my guides. And, and it's not something that, you know, it's not something that I consider my guides, like I, I, I don't consider them my go-between, but I know they're there that when I need that help, you know. When you're asking the animal to go, when, you know, the road one, you're asking the animal. Okay. 
to show you. Yeah. You can also say, you know, you're standing at the road, which way do you feel pulled or, you know. So there's lots of different techniques with that. But, I mean, as far as what she was asking, you know, it's, it really is understanding that that not everybody's, it, it goes back to 100%. You know, and that goes double with with missing animals because it's it's just it's just not going to be every single person, and that's why a lot of communicators don't do it. Yeah. It's 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 heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, so unless you have that gene that you can kind of shut things down, I mean, there's a woman that I refer to quite a lot, and I've gotten feedback. Um, from my clients about her, and they say, "Yeah, she she was she was helpful, but she, she wasn't as nice as you, <laughs> you know." So you know, I mean, and that's fine, you know. Not that she wasn't a nice person, but she's a little gruff, and I'm a little bit more right. touchy feely. Right. And uh, but that's what makes her be able to do missing animals, and me not right. so much, yeah. you know, because I just boy, I, I it's 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 tough, but. That's that's the biggest tip that I can get is is having an understanding that they're not all going to be found that you're going to have you know and and I would suggest talking to somebody who does you know calling somebody like Carol Gurney who does a lot of missing animals and finding out what her percentage is finding out somebody who who does this all the time what find out what their percentage is and compare yours I hate to say that compare but you know understand let by hearing that you'll understand that even they don't find everybody right which will help you understand that you can still do this work but it's not always going to end happy right and that's why not everybody likes to do it and that's why not everybody likes to do it yeah okay well unfortunately we are out of time today but Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. This was really, really enlightening. So many great answers and so many different perspectives. I'm sure everybody's going to be all jazzed up and ready to go again. <laughs> Good. Thank um, you. Thank you for joining us. Um, your your uh, website is right down there, pausetalk.net, and you've got your new book out, Pause Talking. On yay, Amazon. yay. Yay, let me show so, you my baby again. <laughs> it's full of how-tos and how, yep. how to do this the skill and this technique. So um, if you're still looking for that magic way, this might be it. <laughs> Hopefully so. Well, thank you, Josh. I really appreciate it. I've really enjoyed this. And I hope it answers some questions for people out there. And, and you know, anybody out there, my pop, my yeah, my website is there. If you have other questions, I'm going to be giving an online class next month and uh, and an in-person class the month after that. So I do I do give online classes through Zoom and much like this, where everybody it's kind of fun because everybody can, you know, we have animals walking across and. <laughs> Everybody's in their comfort of their own home. So, yep. um, so if you have any other questions, uh, concerns, please do contact me. I'm I'm happy to answer any questions and help you out. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay. Josh. I really appreciate it. Take Alrighty. care. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, everybody.